Hey folks, and welcome back. This is lab number 12, where we're going to deal with threading. So the idea of threading in C Sharp is that we would sometimes have information that we want to parse or we want to do something with. And we might want to break that up into smaller jobs and let each of those jobs run on different processors or different cores so that we can do them in parallel. Um, and in order to do that, we have to specify what the work is that we want done, put it into an object, and then we're going to use the thread start and thread objects in order to create a thread of that workload and tell it to go ahead and start. All right, so I'm going to do a little example today um, just to show you the very basics of creating an object and having it do something. But this is also just a cool little example. As usual with Replit, if you were to grab this URL up here, you can pull this down yourself and you can play with it. Uh, you'd want to fork it and then you can make your own changes to the code if you wanted to pull something else in. Um, but basically, down here in this weather file, which I'll show you in just a moment, I've created some code that goes and gets the current weather forecast for the Kennesaw campus. It gets the temperature and what the current conditions are on the campus are. And I'll show you how all that works in a moment. But suffice it to say, that's a class by itself. And I have a method in there called run. I could call it anything I want, but I happen to call it run. Um, so once I have that class defined, then my main method ends up being very simple. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to create an object um, of the class. Just like you would make an object for anything else, you're going to say the normal thing, which is the object name, make it a variable equals new object name. So in this case, the object that I, the class that I created was called weather. So I'm saying weather my weather equals new weather. Uh, the second thing that I do once I have a object created is that I'm going to use thread start, which is a built in um, uh, class. Um, and I'm going to do tr thread start t1, sorry, ts1 equals new thread start. And I pass it in the name of my object, which is my weather, followed by dot and the name of the method that I wanted to run inside of that object, which in my case was called run. Um, once I've done that and I've created my thread start, I'm going to pass that into a thread. And so that goes in here into the my new thread. And then I can simply call start on that thread. So these are pretty much steps that you would just want to memorize because that's how you create a thread. You're always going to use thread start, thread, and start in order to get it started. There are other ways to do it, but this is probably the simplest. Anytime that you're doing threading, you're going to make sure that you include system threading. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the this example, and we're going to take a look at the weather class. So over here, I'm including a whole bunch of extra stuff. I'm including system.net and system.io, and that's because in this particular case, I'm going to be using external web sources. I'm going to go out to the internet and pull down some data. So I need .NET and .IO. Um, this uh, is because I'm going to get back a JSON document. I'm going to explain that in a second. And this is a library that I had to install a package in, um, in Replit in order to have this library. But it allows me to parse a JSON object. Um, and then finally, I'm including threading here because this is going to also use a sleep. And the sleep method is inside of threading. All right, so inside of here, beyond the includes or the using statements, I have just a weather class. There's nothing magical about this, and it happens to have one method called run. Um, so I'll explain there is a try block and a while loop, which I'll come back to those in just a moment, but we're going to start looking here. So I'm using a, um, a method, an object called web client, which just allows you to go and pull down a web page inside your Java code. So it makes a connection to an external web server and it pulls down a document for you and gives it back to you as a string, which is pretty cool. All right, so the particular URL that I'm going to go to is what's listed here on this. So HTTPS API.weather.gov. This is the National Weather Service and they provide this for free. It allows you to just go and get the current weather for free for any location in the US. Um, in order to use it, you do have to figure out what station you're nearest to. And for us on the Kennesaw campus, um, K-R-Y-Y happens to be uh, the airport, the Cobb County Airport, which is pretty close by. Um, and so if you were to take that URL and paste that into a just regular web browser, this is what you're going to get back. So it doesn't look like a web page. You're just getting back raw data, basically. And the particular format of this data is called JSON. And generally, JSON is going to be something that is listed as a bunch of keys followed by a value. And so like for here, you have an ID, which is this, and you have this uh, value. They're usually separated by a colon. JSON also has the ability to have an array, 
and an array would be square brackets. And that's not particularly relevant to this, but just wanted to let you know that's what's going on. So the thing that's important to me in this, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that I don't care about. They're telling me a lot of information that I don't care, but the stuff I do care about is here under this properties tag. And specifically, I'm going to care about this timestamp, which tells me when the observation was made, this text description, which tells me just in text what the current conditions on campus are. It could be rainy or clear or hot or whatever. And then finally, this little block here where they tell me the current temperature, and they do provide it in Celsius. That's that value. So it's 7.2 degrees Celsius on the Kennesaw campus right now. So I'm going to have to convert that over to Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's the document that I'm dealing with. Um, so these first couple of lines of code, just create a web client, allow me to then specify that I'm pretending that I am a web browser. Don't worry too much about that. It's just something you have to pass. Then I'm making an open statement to read in that URL. So I'm specifying the URL that I want it to go to. And then I'm using the usual stream reader um, object in order to pull in the data that I get from there and then um, parse it basically into a string. And so in the end, that's what I'm getting here. I end up with a string called JSON. I could have called it anything I wanted. Um, and I'm getting reader.read to end, which is going to read all the data in until the connection is closed. So at the end of this line, I have a variable called JSON, which is a string, and it has everything that's in here in it. You can do this for any web page, so this could be useful for other things as well. All right, so once I have that, the next step that I got to do is I've got to convert that from JSON into something that I can actually pull information out of. And so there's a um, handy little library um, called JObject. Um, which is built by these folks. And unfortunately, you do have to install a package in Replit, which if you've never done that, you go to Packages, and then you search for newtonsoft.json and install it. It just takes a couple of seconds to do that. But once it's in there, you'll be able to just say using Newtonsoft JSON, and then you can say J object parse, and then you can tell it what you're looking for. So I'm to pull out the timestamp, I'm telling it to look in Properties Timestamp. And again, that's because if you start at the top here, I wanted to go into the properties tag and inside of there, I wanted to go to the timestamp tag and that's going to return back this value for me. And specifically, that's going to be a string. So now I have a variable called timestamp, which has that data in it. Likewise, the condition, I'm going to go to properties.text description and return it as a string. And that comes from properties.text description. There it is right there. And so the string is going to be the word clear at the moment. And then finally, I need to pull in the current temperature value. So I, I have a float temp C, and what I'm doing is I'm saying properties.temperature.value, and again, that's properties.temperature.value, and then that's going to return this back to me, which I'm storing in a float. And you do have to specify what type it's, it is for each thing. All right, so now that I've got my temperature in Celsius, I gotta convert that to Fahrenheit and you just take the temperature in C, multiply it by 9 fifths and add 32, and that's going to give you the current temperature in Fahrenheit. All right, and then I just print them out. Okay, so if I were to run this program right now, what you would see here is that it would print out a timestamp, a condition, and then it would print out the current temperature. So right now it's quite cold, it's 46 degrees, or it was um, when I ran this a few moments ago. Um, so the last thing that's happening in here is that there's a thread sleep for 900,000. You might wonder what's going on with that. Well, I mentioned at the beginning, this whole thing is in a loop. This whole thread is in a loop. So I'm telling this thread to keep going forever because while true is just going to keep going forever and ever and ever. Um, and so at the end of the uh, loop, just before it goes back up to the top, I'm sleeping for 900,000 milliseconds, which is the same as 900 seconds, which turns out to be 15 minutes. So basically it's going to go retrieve the data from this URL, which will give it the most recent data, parse out the information and print the thing, and then this thread is going to sleep for 15 minutes. When it wakes back up again, it's going to go back to the top, get the most recent data, and print it back out onto the screen. And so if you were to leave this running in a window, it will actually every 15 minutes print out the new temperature. And as you can see here, in the 15 minutes that I left it running, the temperature is plummeting. It's gone down two degrees almost, or I guess a degree. Um, and then it would keep running forever and ever. So I think you could imagine using something like this in an app on a phone where you would have the temperature sitting on your screen at all times. You'd have a thread in the background that's every 15 minutes waking up, getting the most recent data, and updating something on your screen to show you the most recent temperature.
And so that's the idea of what's going in here. But again, to review, the topic today was threads. And effectively, what I did was I created a class. I made a method inside that class, which you can call whatever you want. But in my case, I called it run. And then over in my main, I simply used, I created an object of weather, which is my class that I defined here. I used thread start in order to specify that I wanted to use that object dot run. And then I started the thread. And again, if you start this up, it'll run. And every 15 minutes, it will show you the information. So hopefully that gets you started on today's lab. And you guys go have some fun with waking up babies. And I will see you guys next week.